block by block and let's add a custom block model to Minecraft. Alright, we find ourselves back in today once more in this tutorial. We're going to be adding a custom block model to Minecraft. This is a continuation tutorial once again of our block bench tutorial that we did. I will link this once again in the top right corner and in the description below. And this is the block model that we've made. It's nothing too crazy, nothing too fancy, but it is definitely a custom block model. Now we have already exported this in the block bench tutorial and what we've gotten is a JSON file and this is going to be used as a block model JSON file. I will copy this over once again and just like last time we have to change the textures over here tutorial mod colon block slash and then whatever the name is and then we also have to change the spaces to underscores over here that's also very important that we have this and there we go let's also add the textures that's gonna be the tray texture the main texture and the leg texture all those go into the block folder over here let's just copy those over there you go then let's also add the item model this is going to be very very easy this is literally just going to be any old item model like from another block so this is going to be the gem underscore infusing underscore station dot json and it just points back to the gem underscore infusing underscore station so nothing too crazy for the model files and like i said this json file was exported from blockbench let's also quickly add the translation so once again we're going sort of backwards here this is going to be the gem underscore infusing underscore station and then of course same thing here this is going to be the gem infusing station right the next thing is the block states json file and here we're actually starting to get very interesting so if we look back at a block bench, what you can see is that in theory, this block is pretty much symmetrical in all sides, right? However, I rotated, it actually should be more or less symmetrical, except for this right side that has a little bit of a different texture. So what you know from the furnace is that the front of the furnace always faces the player when the furnace is set down. And this is exactly what we want to have happen here as well. So in our case, this face would always be facing the player when we set this down. Or in another words, basically, this with the different texture here is always going to be on the right side of the block when we set the block down. Now to do this, we're going to need a, a specific block stage JSON file that I've already prepared. This will be, of course, available to you in the description below. Now this shouldn't be anything too insane. This is pretty much just a JSON file that has different block states properties and it looks for certain values of them, right? So if the facing is north, then we're just going to have it normally. And if the facing is anything but north, then we're basically rotating this particular block model around by a certain number of degrees. And that is pretty much what we're doing over here. Now for this, we of course need a custom block class. So we're just going to make a new class here. And this is going to be the gem infusing station block. This will extend the horizontal direction block and will immediately hover all this create constructor matching super. If the name here annoys you, click on it, press shift F6, and then we can change it to properties. Now we also need to add a property over here, namely a block state property. And that's going to be the direction property called facing. And that's going to be equal to the block states block state properties dot horizontal facing this one right here and then was of course very important here is that we overwrite the create block state definition method we can also change this let's just send this to builder over here and then we'll take the builder dot add and then add and then add the facing property to it that is very important that we have this otherwise it will not work We'll also copy over three methods. That is the get state for placement method, the rotate method, and the mirror method. Now, those are exactly the same methods as seen in the furnace block, which basically govern exactly what I've discussed before, right? So that the front of the furnace, let's say, always faces the player when you set down the furnace. This is exactly what happens in this case as well, right? We're just getting the opposite direction of where the player is facing and then basically rotating the actual block around that. That's all that you really need to do what those three methods do and that should be fine. Now this is actually all that we need for the block except for one thing which we're going to add in just a moment. For the time being I want to show you the way that this works and then let's go into the mod blocks class and let's actually register this. So let's just copy the jumpy block over here and we're just going to say this is the gem underscore infusing underscore station. And then, of course, the name here as well, gem in infusing station. And this is, of course, very important, a new gem infusing station block. This is incredibly important. We're going to have an error here. This is because the constructor here is not public. Let's just change, change this to public. And there we go. Now everything should work fine. Let's also make this maybe metal. That's going to be okay. And the rest here should be okay. One thing we do want to call here is we want to call the no occlusion. That's very important. Otherwise, we will be able to look through the world when we set this block down. And that is, of course, not something that we want. 
Now, those are all the steps that we need to go through, except for the voxel shape, which we're going to take a look at after we've gone into the game to basically explain this. This would be the bounding box around the block. But let's first of all see if it works and then we'll continue. All right, finds us back in Minecraft, and there we go. The gem infusing station has been added, and I've set it down. You can see, first of all, the bounding box is not quite right, but like I said, we'll look at this in a moment. Uh, excuse me, please. Can we can we look at this? Thank you. So you can see that on the right side, you know, the little bit of a weirder texture is on the right side, and even if I set it down into this direction, you can see it's always on the right side. So the basically the block itself rotates around, and the you know, one certain face will always show towards the player when setting this particular block down. Another question as well, the bounding box doesn't quite work. Now, why is that the case? This is the voxel shape, and there's a very important lesson here in this case that I want to basically tell you, and that is to not have an exact voxel shape because that's actually going to be a bad idea. Let's take a look at block bench to see why that is. So like I said, we're now in block bench and what you can do is you can actually export a particular block model here as a voxel shape. And the way to do this is you just need a plugin and that's going to be the mod utils plugin right here. Now this is okay, I guess, let's say. Um, for If you want to use this, what you have to do is you have to make sure that you use no groups over here. You could need to completely delete all of your groups and add only one group that has to be called exactly voxel shapes. And it has to be exactly written like this. And then you take all of your cubes and you put them under this particular group. And then what you can do is you can go to file and then export and then export voxel shape. Like I said, with that plugin. And we are using the Moj mappings. This is correct. Confirm. And then let's save this voxel shape now. It's going to be a Java file. Let's just open this. And you can see this is now the voxel shape that it basically has exported for us. Now, this means that it traces over exactly the block shape itself. Now, you might say, well, that's perfect. This is exactly what I want. But what I'm trying to tell you is that actually it's not what you want. Because if you have an incredibly complicated block, like, for example, maybe this one right here. Now, it's not crazy complicated, but it is an example nonetheless. So this is from my own mod. And you can see, right, we have like some crazy slanted things over here and like some tiny things. Now, I could, in theory, make this all voxel shapes, right? I can export all of this craziness and have this as one voxel shape. But why bother? Because the voxel shape, right, it's like it is about the bounding box, number one, with the collision for the player and or, you know, other entities. And it also is for hovering over with the mouse. Now, the issue is that this is incredibly intensive for the processor and like stuff like that. So it's basically that makes the game slower. And if you have insanely complicated voxel shapes in your mod and the more of those blocks are placed down, the more it slows down the game. So what I can just it's an appeal basically to you. Just make an approximation. This is going to be enough if you just have a shape that is literally just this, right? Just this, and that's fine. If you really want to cut out the legs over here, that's also okay. But, you know, none of this, like, crazy nonsense with, you know, the slanted sides and all of that. Don't do it. It is not worth it in the long run. I'm just telling you this. So even if we could... So even though we could use this, I can actually show you a way that you can use this by just doing, doing one block dot box in this case. Let's go once again into our block class. And what we're going to do is we're just going to make a private static final voxel shape. This is going to be called shape. And this is going to be equal to block.box. And you can see this requires us to supply six different doubles. Now, what we're just going to do is we're just going to put in 0, 0, 0, and then 16, 16, 16. Now, what this will do is this. Now, this will create a normal block that we've just seen, right? So this is going to be a bounding box of size 16 by 16 by 16. So this is basically the beginning X, beginning Y, and beginning Z. And this is the ending X, ending Y, ending Z values. How would we approximate this? Well, if we actually look at this from the side, we can see that, well, pretty much we just need to get the height roughly right, and that's going to be okay. So if we go into wireframe mode, we can actually count. So we can say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Let's say 10, maybe 11 if, if we want to add the tray here as well. But let's just say 10. So really, we only need 10 in the Y direction. And that would be pretty much all that we need to do in this case. So let's just do this, right? So instead of 16 in the Y direction, we're just going to say 10 in the Y direction. And now we have the shape approximated exactly how we need to. Now, this needs to be returned in a method that is called get shape. What's very important is that you choose this one right here, that one with the block states and all of that, not this one, very important. And then we just return the shape. Now, one other thing that could be if your block is not as symmetrical as this one, sometimes it re might require you to rotate the shape as well. 
For this, I highly recommend you check out my 118 block model tutorial, where I show this in a little bit more detail. I will also link this in the top right corner and in the description below. Whatever the case may be, this is all that we need to make a custom voxel shape. Now let's go into the game for the final time and let's see if it works. All right, we found us back in Minecraft and let's see the block over here. So if I hover over this, you can see, ah, there we go. Exactly how I'd expect it to. If I, you know, step onto it, right, we can see the actual bounding box is exactly right and exactly what you expect. Now, like I said, right, you know, down here, I'm still hovering like over it if I'm, you know, in between the legs. But let's be honest, is this really an issue? And if it really is, you can always, you know, change up a little bit of the stuff and then it will also work. So overall, I highly recommend using approximated voxel shapes and never exact voxel shapes. Right, but that concludes this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new and I'll see you all in the next tutorial. Oh, so, yeah.